to the award-winning Waterloo School Student News, East High Edition. I'm Malaya Williams. And I'm Annie Grove. You don't need to go far to experience a safari. One is happening in Waterloo Schools. Check out this jungle walk at Kitchell Elementary. Walk around, take a look at their diaries. They get to choose their own animal, and the report we do here at school, we go through the whole process of their introductory paragraph and finding their facts, and then they're off kind of on their own to find their interesting facts. The diorama is all done at home. We encourage families to be involved. And then we decided almost a couple years ago that oh, it would be fun to incorporate a jungle walk and have fourth grade is going to come down, and they've developed some questions, and they're going to speak with the third graders and ask questions and give them a little rubric about how they did. And what is one interesting fact about your animal? They're very excited. It's like Christmas morning in here. They are excited to share what they've done and all the hard work they've put into it. And it's just really neat to watch the whole process unfold because they get very excited when they get to choose their own animal research. And then when they're kind of let loose to find their interesting facts, they're just so impressed with some of the information that they found. Koalas eat a little bit of dirt every so often to digest eucalyptus leaves. Do can let his prey, get us his prey too? It's just a neat learning process. and They're very much a community in here. They help each other They, as people were bringing in their dioramas, I heard lots of, oh, that's neat. Oh, hey, I've got something at home I can bring for you if you want to add to it. And it's just kind of a community building, authentic task. I'm Mariah Daniels. And I'm Patricia Valdominos. Reading is so important for young people to master. And when you make it a competitive sport, it helps boost your student skills. I should try that. Me too. A challenge between Miss Young and Miss Over here, they're running miles. Every mile that they get, they put down a sticker. In every book that all of the classes read, we put down a sticker for us. And at the end, whoever wins, we get a prize, but we don't know what the prize is. The students always love to compete with their teachers and beat them any way they can, so it's been really exciting to see. I had a lot of kids who hadn't read a whole book yet, even though our goal is five per quarter. We had a lot of reluctant readers, and it was just enough to kind of push some of them over the edge and try to get them to compete. They had a list of books they could pick from, and they had some motivation, and and it works. We've also been setting page goals for some of them to try to show them that they can, little chunks at a time, finish a book. I'm training for a half marathon and she runs marathons and so we thought what better way than to keep ourselves accountable and to get the kids reading. The first week of doing it, it was a low number, but then after the kids saw that we were going to beat them if they didn't start reading, they joined together and the second week they read 126 books. So the whole goal is a lot less screen time and more reading time. It really is the easiest and most fun way to raise kids' vocabulary and their reading level if they can just find a book or author they love and, and try to enjoy it. Checkouts in the library on Thursdays when we go, it's increased so much. The kids are, I read this book, I need a new one. It's going over very well. I'm Malaya Williams. And I'm Annie Grove. Music education is alive and well in Waterloo schools, thanks to talented staff and students. Let's take a look at what's been happening. This would be the third year in this new model of having all students start instrumental music in sixth grade. Part of that model was that we lost the fifth grade instrumental instruction, but we gained everyday instruction in sixth grade. So band, orchestra, and chorus classes are offered every day now. There are huge improvements not only in the quality of instruction that's happening and student retention from day to day, year to year, but the enrollment has also increased drastically. As part of my role, I had the opportunity to go into the music classes from kindergarten through high school. So I get to see the students learning in general music and then in chorus band and orchestra as beginners and then also as high schoolers when they're starting to maybe do a little more fine tuning with their musical abilities. It's great to see the students that I helped start in sixth grade and the progress that they've made now as their eighth graders and then seeing those students that were eighth graders and how they've developed in high school is really, really interesting. We think of music classes as they're like a big family. Music is a whole new language, so you learn this language with a bunch of your friends or family and um, the opportunities provided in 
concerts in middle school and then as they go forward into high school there are many other honor opportunities that they can go and it, it creates neat bonds not only between the students but the teachers and those students can have some really fun connections. I'm Mariah Dales. And I'm Patricia Valdominos. East High students and kids from China are bonding over robotics. Check out this FTC challenge that brought them together. Our Chinese uh, Oriental Pearl, and uh, we know that they want to share some gifts with us, and then we're going to share some gifts with them. So you guys can Thank you. Thank you. The importance of today's event is to bring together First Tech Challenge teams from Waterloo and team from China. And the idea is that the teams will fellowship together and show off their robots that they built throughout the season and share the tips and tricks that they have to competing in this year's annual challenge, which is Cascade Effect. So you'll see when the robots run that the robots have to accomplish different tasks. And what's great about the two teams coming together is that they can show off a lot of different ways of how they accomplish the task and how they work together and it's a great time for teams to share and enjoy robotics together as fellowship. It's a really good program. We uh, not only uh, focus on the robot and the mechanical skills and programming, but we spend as much time on learning about teamwork, figuring out how to work together. So what you just witnessed is we drove off the ramp that gave us certain points. We were able to navigate to a tube. We dumped two balls in the tube. I like being on the robotics team because you get to meet new people, international experiences, outreaching, helping the community, giving back. It's about gracious professionalism. It's being able to cooperate and compete and have fun. Meeting people from other countries will help me understand global challenges. That sounds really interesting. It does. I, I build, did you know I built a robot before? No way. No, seriously. Last summer at University of Northern Iowa, I took a robotics oh. class and I got a scholarship for that robotics class. Like, That's seriously. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon. And, and go, go Trojans. Trojans.